Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to explain the anatomy of a laser engraver and explain its working principle. Without further ado, let's get into it. This video is in reply to uh, one of your comments. Um, so I had a comment asking uh, to uh, show where some specific part is located into the machine. So I thought it was a good idea for all of my subscribers uh, to have some clue on the anatomy of the machine, so to show the major components and also to understand a little bit how it works. And so that's uh, w what I'm going to show you today. Um, now, a laser machine, uh, if you're following my channel, I've already stated in uh, some other videos, it's nothing different than a CNC machine. However, we could say that it's a simplified CNC machine, and that's for two reasons. One is because obviously you have a missing Z axis, and the other one is because of the uh, complexity of the instruction that is given to the machine, which is way simpler than a typical for example uh, um, 3d uh, printer now uh, the major components of a typical cnc machines um, they will basically be grouped into three categories uh, one uh, can be called uh, structural or chassis the other one is the mechanical and the third one is the electronics and electromechanical uh, group now, I won't be giving you the number or quantities of each of individual components because obviously this will depend on the type of machine, the size, the model and the maker. But in general, you will find the minimum of the components that I'm about to list. Now, starting with the structural group, uh, that's basically everything related to the framing system and what uh, keeps the entire assembly together. So. Uh, in our example, for example, we got this uh, acrylic supports and this railing which makes up the structure of the machine and keeps all the assembly together. In some more complex machine like the 3D printer, you will find uh, more components and more beams being interlocked together in some sort. Then the mechanical part, uh, it's everything that is related to uh, the motion of the machine or more specifically converting uh, the rotary motion which is normally given by a motor uh, into linear motion and in our specific case we got this railing over here and this trolley, small trolley and a big trolley. Now the conversion of rotary motion into linear motion can be achieved uh, in several ways but for low power machines, a timing belt is uh, usually found and that's basically a belt which is um, uh, constrained somewhere, it's blocked somewhere through, uh, through a stopper and it's basically uh, passing through the uh, pinions driven through the pinion driven by the stepper motor and constrained on the opposite side by a pulley and so uh, what this does basically when the stepper motor is rotating the pulley is going on a linear fashion and because of the trolley this, that is um, basically attached to the belt at one point and the railing this contraption will basically convert the rotary motion into a linear motion so the trolley will basically uh, go back and forth into uh, one of the axes okay so we got the small axis in this machine and the big axis and they both uh, use a timing belt contraption to achieve this uh, uh, scope and so this is uh, what makes up the mechanical uh, category and then uh, finally, and that's normally the most expensive one for small machines, is the electrical and electromechanical uh, part. So that's basically made out of the uh, hand tool. The hand tool is usually the, the attachment that 
actually perform the job that is intended for the machine. So in our case, uh, it's a laser machine, so we got a laser module over here. Uh, if it were a 3D printer, you would have find an extruder. And if it were a CNC router, you would have find a spindle instead. Okay, so they are different hand tools. Then you will have uh, electric motors, specifically they are going to be stepper motor. Now, stepper motor are being used because of the high level of precision that they uh, provide. And so I'm not going into details on how they work and what makes the difference between uh, regular motor and stepper motors. But the idea is that in all those kind of machines, you will always find stepper motors. Okay. Then you will find a uh, motors driver. That's normally a standalone driver, which interconnects between the stepper motor and the main board. Okay. And then at the end, at the heart of the machine, we find the main board, which is here, or the motherboard, call it the way you like. That's basically the board that will be responsible for everything in the machine. And then to finish up, you will find a set of uh, sensors and limiting switches. And this will basically provide an electrical uh, input to the main board uh, to indicate that the machine on the specific axis has reached the uh, its limitation. So in our case, for example, we got a micro switch over here, as you can see. So when the trolley slides all the way to the end, we'll basically click the micro switch and the main board will know that the axis has uh, reached the hand. And another one, it's actually located down here. It's very small next to this uh, uh, X nut and the same for the major axis will basically uh, provide feedback for the hand switches. Now in more expensive machine you will find a double set of switches to indicate the minimum and the maximum uh, in the range of the axis but in this uh, cheap machine they will basically economize in everything and so you only get the zero zero switches. In fact it's been happening uh, when you have wrong settings in your uh, controlling software that uh, the trolley actually slams against the physical limiter over here and uh, the stepper motor is overdriving. So that this might lead to uh, damages. All right, once we know what are the major components of our machine, we now need to understand how all this assembly all come together and work with your computer in order to uh, make your project. Now, you will have most likely produce your uh, project through some kind of uh, uh, designing or uh, graphical editor software like Inkscape. And now you want to send it to the machine so that the machine performs your, for instance, engraving job. Now, how does this work? Now, as we said, the main board is responsible for interfacing with your PC and then uh, converting the uh, received instruction into electrical signal for the uh, stepper motor and the laser module. So what happened is that on your PC you will have a piece of software uh, that will be responsible for basically compiling whichever input file you are giving into a G-code file and then sending this G-code uh, to the machine, so to the main board. In the, main, in the main board, the microcontroller will be configured or programmed uh, to translate this uh, uh, G-code into electrical signal and then we'll send the electrical signal um, to the individual uh, stepper motors and the laser module so that it can uh, basically engrave. So if, for example, you know that the machine now has to move uh, a um, few millimeter on the X, few millimeter on the Y, and you need some specific power uh, through the instruction that you've been giving uh, through the uh, controlling software. Basically, the machine will convert that and will tell the specific stepper motor uh, to 
to basically be energized for a certain period of time okay at a certain speed and the same is valid for the laser module so that in the complex will basically make up the signal for a single point engraving and that's basically how the machine is going to work now in more complex machine like the 3d printer uh, a similar type of things will uh, happen however I'm sure that if you have had experience with the 3D printers, you have heard about a Marlin, while now with a laser engraver, you're hearing about GRBL. So these are basically two firmwares uh, that are installed on the microcontroller, on the small chip inside of the uh, main board, and are basically responsible for doing this kind of uh, conversion. Uh, be aware that uh, uh, Marlin is way more uh, complex, can get more instruction and that's basically obvious because if you think to a 3D printer, the 3D printer will basically require a higher a degree of complexity of instruction, uh, you know, when you're slicing your design through the slicing software, you have many, many variables that uh, uh, can be given, so uh, Marlin was born exactly for that kind of complexity while laser grbl is going to handle a uh, simple 2d type of uh, projects um, so uh, the complexity is already drastically reduced all right and that's pretty much all um, so i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any question or if you want to know uh, more about some specific components how they work how they operate and also eventually where you can shop them, just leave them uh, in the comment below. For the time being, uh, if you like the video, click the thumb up button below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!